Hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Antonia. I'm a third year medical student and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about integration. So here on my channel I make videos about medicine and university and pretty much anything else that pops into my head. So if that sounds good to you guys, feel free to subscribe and keep watching this video. So today we're going to be talking about intercalation. So I'll just go through what intercalation actually is and then we can talk a bit more about it because I don't think people really know what it is as such until you get into med school. Because in the UK you can go to medical school right off the bat from high school so you don't need to do a bachelor's degree or any other prior degrees before doing it you get a load of 18 and 19 year olds in med school like I started in med school at 19 who only know medical school they only know medicine and while that's fine for the majority of people because in reality they're in love with medicine and that's all they want to do they don't want to focus on anything else a lot of people will want to have another specialty a lot of people will want to have something different or maybe are interested in a certain topic like anatomy or physiology or global health that they'd like to do a bit more study on and that's where intercalation comes in intercalation is essentially a year where you can defer your medical studies and go and study another topic come back to medical school with that degree so you either get a bachelor's or a master's depending on which degree type you choose Different institutions do it in a different way. So some medical schools in the UK, like Oxbridge and UCL, will have mandatory six year courses. So you have to intercalate whether you want to or not. And some medical schools will be five year courses, but will give an opportunity to intercalate if you want to, like my med school. At some institutions, you have to intercalate at your medical school's institution. So you're stuck there basically for that extra year. But at other med schools, you're allowed to go wherever you please. There are certain stipulations on whether you intercalate as well. So some medical schools will ask their students to be in the top two or three deciles or top 25% of the year. Whereas other medical schools will leave it a bit more open for you to decide whether you want to intercalate or not. So if that sounds good, you know, getting a degree in a year, adding that extra bit to your portfolio. Then we move on to what course you should apply for. So like I said in the beginning, if you have a specialist interest in something, then intercalation may be something that you might want to look into. So for example, if you think that you like the look of cardiology or cardiovascular surgery, then cardiovascular sciences, which some universities offer might be something for you. If you like anatomy a lot, then you can do an anatomy degree. If you like physiology, then you can do physiology degrees. Pretty much any degree is open to you. And in some cases, it doesn't even have to be a medicine related one. I know that I spoke to someone last year who wanted to do music sciences degree. You can also do more specialist degrees in other fields. So there are law degrees you can get that specifically pertain to medicine. I know that there's the LLM in healthcare law and like law and medicine and healthcare, depending on where you go. So you can find something out there for you if you're interested. Definitely research into it and look into the courses properly because you don't want to be stuck on a course that you don't enjoy. Two universities may offer the same course but they may conduct them in completely different ways look into how long the term dates are and whether you can apply for accommodation how it's assessed so if you don't want to have exams on your intercalated year don't go somewhere where it's really exam heavy just look into the courses properly next topic i guess would be where to apply if you go to a university where you have to intercalate at your university then you've, you've had your decision made for you if you go to a university like mine which allows you to integrate wherever then you can look more into locations i know some people have gone for places that they think have a cheap living cost because they want to try and save money as we're in university literally for five years studying medicine and you make it six by integrating personally for me i didn't really mind where i was going to go my biggest priority was the course and making sure that it was a course that i actually wanted to study next topic is what you need to apply so applying for an integrated degree whether it's a bachelor's an undergraduate degree or a master's a postgraduate degree is quite similar to applying for a normal university degree only that you don't go through UCAS or anything you apply directly to the institution themselves different universities will ask for different things but some common things that they will ask for is your interim transcript so the transcript pertaining to any study you've done in med school 
at different medical schools allow you to intercalate at different times. So that might be up to second year, up to third year, up to fourth year, depending on where you intercalate. It's just so the universities you're applying to can see what your academic ability is. A reference or references, I'll come back to that in a later section. Your personal statement, so this is quite important for the majority of universities because this will be a distinguishing factor for you look what the university is asking for different universities will be asking for different points to be covered in the personal statement but the core themes will be why you want to study there why that university why that course and then what you plan to do in the future after studying that course and graduating from medical school and some of them will ask for exposure and experience with that particular field if you'd have any so for example with anatomy they may ask whether you've done any dissection in your medical degree which some universities will offer but it's also fair to put in if your university doesn't like my uni doesn't that maybe you want to get a bit more hands-on and make your intentions clear as to why you're applying for that course. Also double check the word count as well. I do think that in my experience, the word counts that universities are looking for just tend to vary quite a bit. So sometimes I'll publish one number, but they don't really mind as long as you can convey why you want to do that course to other people or to the people reading over your application. Some places will ask you to go to interview. So another place I applied for asked for an interview, but I know that some of the pre-hospital medicine courses at Plymouth and Queen Mary do you require an interview so if you don't want to interview for a course then don't apply to those and just make sure that you're aware of what's expected of you because there's no point applying to something and then being completely taken aback that they've asked you for an interview if it's written on the website. A lot of places will ask for a letter of good standing which basically means that they want proof from your university that you're allowed to intercalate again you should normally be able to contact your med school and ask for our university has an intercalation email so you can literally send in all your requests there and someone gets back to you with your transcript letter of good standing anything you need like that we'll get back to references so who should you get to be your referee um i had a bit of an issue with my referees because um, it's suggested that you get academic advisors to be your referees. I had the same academic advisor in first and second year, but my academic advisor changed at the start of third year. So she, my academic advisor has only really known me for maybe six months at this point. However, my academic advisor from first and second year didn't reply to her emails. So I needed to ask around for people to be my referee. Luckily for me, at the end of the day, when I provided my transcript and my medical CV to my current academic advisor, she helped me out and she was able to be my reference. I did get my um, reference issue um, resolved, but it did require me to be very creative. So if your academic advisor, who should be the first port of call, because I guess they know you the best, but if they can't do it or you need more than one reference, then you can ask doctors that supervised you in hospital on placement. You can ask members of your um, teaching staff. So if you know people running clinical skills, then you can ask them as long as they know you a little bit. The only thing your referee shouldn't be is a friend or a family member because the majority, if not all references that I've seen, they don't want from your family members or friends or people who know you really, really closely like that. Unless it's a personal reference where you can do that. But I haven't seen any medical schools asking for personal references. And general tips for applying to intercalations. I've currently heard back from all the places I've applied to. I only applied to three places. So far, I'm still debating applying to a fourth place, but I would say it's better to apply now and then think about whether you want to do it later because you can always reject an offer but if you don't apply and then you think oh I should have actually applied and I do like this field or whatever but it's past the deadline then you can't get that place back unfortunately so I'd say apply and weigh up the options afterwards definitely look into the financial side of things as well I would have loved to have done a master's but I have to think about that very seriously because if you want to fund a master's you need to get a postgraduate loan which doesn't give you access to maintenance so you need to think about whether you can afford it with a bachelor's degree if you do it after third year it's still funded by student finance so it's a bit more affordable that way but definitely look into the financial side as well then just do it for FRS points if you intercalate you do get access to a couple extra FRS points which help you when you're getting foundation year posts and things when you become a doctor but it's not worth taking a year out just to get those couple of points at the end of the day. If you didn't enjoy the degree, then you won't be happy, really. Make sure that you read over all the details involved. So read over details involved from your med school, read over details involved from the universities and courses you want to apply to, and make sure you're well informed before you apply because 
that is the best way to go about it really that's basically my video on intercalation if there's anything i've missed out or anything that anyone wants further clarification on you can drop me a dm at my insta page as a little medic i'll link it up here or you can drop it down in the comments if you want me to make any videos on anything else or talk a bit more about what i've applied to and what i'm doing with intercalation at the moment then feel free to ask that as well and i'll see you guys in the next video